What's up, YouTube? It's your man, my hater, with Muscle and Manhood. I'm on my way to the gym. You know, normally when you see me driving and talking to you, I'm either on my way to the gym or on my way home or someplace else after the gym. And uh, I be in that testosterone state of mind. I want to talk about the fact that you are the prize. You are the prize as it relates to women. Now, there's a lot of, and I, you know, I always say I'm always addressing things that are in a, you know, ideas that are common beliefs, and there's a lot of, okay? Now, let's think about that all by itself. You hear me say a lot of the time, there's a lot of. I'll use that expression because there's an overabundance or a preponderance of ideas that are circulating the world that don't work. They don't work, they fail every time, and yet people still do it. They still do it. They don't wanna do the harder thing. They don't wanna do the uh, less conditioned, less familiar thing. And the reason why I say less conditioned and less familiar is because we live largely in an artificial environment where there's very little observation happening and there's a lot of imitation happening. In case you've never heard of the idea of art imitating life and life in imitating art, that's a real phenomenon. And where people have no vision, people perish. So the phenomenon of imitating art is not necessarily a bad one it's just you need to be sure that whatever creative forces are driving your vision are shaping your reality that they're they're operating for your benefit and they're actually um, helping you and there's a preponderance and a lot of ideas circulating in the world right now especially in the United States that are wrong and bring people dis-ease, dysfunction, frustration, and loss. And there's a lot of people who benefit from that because you can create order out of disorder. And what that means is, is where there's problems, you can bring a solution. Hegelian dialectic is a real phenomenon. Problem, reaction, solution. So it's beneficial to have a lot of problems in a society that is driven by commerce, trade, and exchange of services, okay? C cultures that are driven by, by uh, money and driven by the pursuit of wealth operate most efficiently where there's a lot of problems to be solved so that people can sell their services, their products, and um, their ideas uh, to people who feel a, a sense of lack or who have real legitimate needs to be met. Now there's a there's a uh, expression that goes, and you won't hear it that often, I can't afford to buy cheap shoes. Now I didn't hear this expression until I started learning about um, expensive shoes and the difference between a really high quality bench made shoe versus you know a mass produced you know shoe I needed I want a justification for why expensive men's shoes not all of them I'm not talking about you know Gucci um, Prada and some of the, the really well known high end brands I'm talking about lesser known brands to you know to the mass population and these brands really only appeal to people who have a certain income bracket or who are in the know they just for some reason they're knowledgeable because they've taken an interest in the subject but there's limited I hear what I'm saying there's limited quantities of the best because frankly people prefer what's expedient and cheap and they prefer to suffer 
through it. Now, you may say, well, what do you mean they prefer? Sometimes people just can't afford. That's just, sometimes that's just not entirely true. The market is, is literally constructed by value systems. And because people prefer to work for other people, that means they would prefer to be a wage slave and they, and they prefer not to rise to the occasion of, of higher competition. And because people prefer to eat cheap food, well, that the result of that is they have poor health. And be, because they prefer to, to drink or do drugs rather than face their problems and they use escape, well, they suffer from addictions. And it goes on and on. Now, as it pertains to women, since you are the prize, you need to look at yourself very much like a a high-end commodity a rare investment you you have to to, to create that and, I, and, I, and by the way let me back up a little bit I am not talking about trying okay I don't want you to even try to attract women I'm going to tell you what I'm telling you right now is how it's done without effort and the way it's done without effort is you don't give more value to the females that you want to attract than you give to yourself. You see yourself as just as much, and I'm not saying diminish their value, but what I'm saying is, what do they have to offer? Why are you running around trying to dress nice and, and be fit in the gym and buy nice cars and you're doing all this shit for women? Are you doing it for yourself? Are you genuinely in that career because you love it and are passionate about it? And if you're if you're not, you're if you're doing it so you can attract the affection of women or attract the, the um, and sustain the respect of those people who you know and love, or even try to impress people that don't know you and don't care about you, then. If you're doing those things, you're already off center and you're already in a competitive mode. You're already uh, a highly traded commodity with very little value. You want to be the guy who's rare. You want to be the guy that understands his worth. He's not arrogant, but he's confident. You're arrogant when you need to be. But in general, you're not an arrogant prick. You're an understanding, thoughtful person who understands his own worth and understands just because a woman has a vagina and breasts, it doesn't entitle her to, to, to be in pursuant or to be for you to pursue. Uh, you need to sit down and make a list of the things you appreciate about yourself and then make sure a female that you're, that you're trying to attract can recognize those same values in you and that you need to make a list you need to make a list of the things that you find valuable in a woman and you shouldn't try to don't be too lofty with it though okay because you're not trying to find a friend what you're really looking for is loyalty you're looking for those kind of traits you're looking for um, intelligence basic intelligence not reasoning skills but Intelligence in terms of her nurturing skills that she's sensitive to whenever you're tired whenever you need support That she's yielding She's submissive and she understands her role in a relationship between you and her It's not about being submissive to every man. It's about being submissive to you Okay, you, you're not it, You're not every man and every man is not you so you don't need your woman to act like a pushover with every man but you need to be the head in a relationship and for that to happen if you're going to attract a woman who will appreciate that you have to be really centered in your masculinity so that you can attract a woman who's really centered in her femininity otherwise you're going to where you're if you're 60 percent male and 40 percent female now by the way we both we all men and women have testosterone and estrogen and if you're flowing in estrogen as a male, you're going to attract a woman that's flowing in testosterone. 
You get what I'm saying? It's the law of osmosis. It's the law of osmosis. And that's why you see, that's why our society in the United States has become so androgynous. It's because men aren't being, they've been so emasculated by, you know, those who are in power through the media, largely through the media. And I mean also, I don't mean just movies and videos, I mean books too, and literature. We've been so emasculated that the female gender is becoming masculine. And of course you have the middle, and there's a rise in homosexuality, and a lot of people think they're making this choice. They think they're making the choice to be gay. But if you look at nature in general, nature has a way of balancing things out and nature doesn't uh, doesn't care it it, it 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 takes names and takes heads that's all it does you put a bunch of frogs a bunch of male frogs in a pond some of them want to start turning female and this is the truth so that they can continue to move you know create the, a balance okay and so when you have a society that is basically becoming emasculated, then there's, uh, the general population is gonna shoot to the middle, okay? They're gonna start, men are gonna become softer so they can get along with women who are becoming harder. And then there's gonna be a swell of ones in the middle who aren't real sure about their, their gender trait expression at all. So to sum this up, you have to understand your value as a male you have to understand your value in terms of your core values. You need not to chase women, but to just be. Be on purpose, be doing and expressing who you are and everything you do and be true to that. And be passive and don't be so uh, anxious, okay? Because when you're anxious for something, you know, I, I did a video, say, I think I did a video called uh, Be Anxious for Nothing. and. When you're anxious, you're giving off a frequency of fear and of lack. And there's a lot to the so-called, you know, uh, law of attraction. There's a lot to it. It's not the complete piece. There's other components that work in tandem with the law of attraction. But the law of attraction is largely true. You can see the cup is half empty or half full. I've said enough. Uh... That's enough for you to think about. But you are the prize. Start thinking about it that way. Stop chasing women. Um, start behaving like you have value. And stop assigning women uh, extra value just because they have female genitalia, you know, and a pretty smile and a nice behind. And with that, always, always, always be a man.